let's bring in Victor Davis Hanson, Hoover Institution Senior Fellow. Uh, Victor, right off the top, I want to play a moment from Kamala Harris that sounds almost like an endorsement of Trump. Of course, we have the support of Democrats, but also independents and Republicans. In fact, um, seven members of uh, President George W. Bush's cabinet are supporting our ticket. Uh, we have the support of, of Colin Powell, Cindy McCain, John Kasich. <laughs> Victor, this is like the best news I've heard. The Bushes are against Trump and the, and the uh, McCain family. I mean, this is just, this doesn't even get any better. Yeah, I mean, she was basically saying these are all the reasons why Trump beat 16 <laughs> candidates in the primary and beat Hillary Clinton. But, you know, I think that what was strange about tonight is that systematically, insidiously, relentlessly, it wasn't with a machete, it wasn't with a cleaver, but Mike Pence dismantled Kamala Harris. And I disagree with the pundits in the Beltway that say that, that these don't matter. Maybe they don't in some years of vice presidential candidates, but you juxtapose tonight's uh, statements by Harris, or lack of which, and with Biden's uh, mental uh, confusion in a commercial, and you say, if this is going to continue, this is what you get, it's going to matter. And you can see where this debate, the next two debates in the campaign are going, because they don't have an issue. They, as you pointed out, they, it's not that they won't talk about the court or court packing or who's going to be nominated or Green Deal or fracking, all that. They, they, they can't talk about it because they've made a Faustian bargain with the left and to do so ruins their coalition such as it is. So they're never going to talk about that and they don't have, that means they don't have a remedy for it. If you just keep asking and asking and asking, it's not like they're going to come up with an ingenious solution or answer. They can't. It's existentially impossible. And then the other thing is they're running not against Trump, they're running against the virus. And I think Trump's going to have to be a little bit more aggressive on the defense of the virus. There's a lot of ways to do it. You can say four or five states with 10 or 11 percent of the population. Boy, they made a lot of mistakes on the rest home, tragically so, and that was about 30 percent of our deaths. Or you can say, we're not the worst in the world. We're doing about what UK and Spain and Italy are doing. But I think a much better explanation is, that, is saying, you know what, we're at a point where the lockdowns are as dangerous as the virus. Right. Mental health, substance abuse, child abuse, missed procedures, missed surgeries. Yeah, to and that? you've got to go out there and yeah. you've got to confront this. And we've got half of this population, the lower and middle classes, who take calculated risk every day. They deliver your food. They make things. They deliver your fuel. They get no credit. And we think, well, why aren't they social distancing. They're not because they bring you your food in your basement and Donald Trump can say, I'm one with them. I took, I wasn't reckless. Yeah. I'm well, president. I had to take calculated risks and I take the consequences because I'm one with the people. I'm not one with the basement, uh, the elite. And he can also say, you know, I, I was willing to, it's not an easy thing to have two experimental drugs to be given to you who nobody really knows the long-term side effects or the reactions with one drug with the other on top of a steroid. They think that's reckless, but actually it's, it's the same idea. I'm going to do whatever it takes to get back into the White House. And if that has a calculated risk, I'm sorry, I'm not going to apologize. I'm one with yep. people trying to work and get this country back. And I think that's a really powerful class argument against this kind of snooty, Karen-like, I'm in the basement and I'm going to make the world perfect with my social distancing and mm -hmm. uh, turning people in if their mask slips below their nose stuff. Because yeah. this virus, it's deadly, we know that, but when you just lock down everything, you divert resources away from the people no, who are vulnerable. We've been hitting uh, and, Victor, uh, Victor, uh, we've been hitting the lockdowns on this show I know you have. since literally April. I know okay, I've been against these lockdowns from the very beginning because it was obvious it was going to hurt the poor and the working class the most, and it was going to be a way to you know slow slow the recovery. Although, I mean, what Pence, the one thing Pence didn't say, which I wish he did say, is that we have the strongest economy of the G7. Trump has handled the economy and the economic no, fallout of this virus better than any other country, and Biden will crater us down to where France and Italy and Spain is. He's got to say that in the next debate, but I think it was, a, it was an excellent night, and you gave excellent advice no, to how was. the president should handle this at the next debate. Victor, thank you so much. Great to see you tonight.